All right, so in this part of the series, I'm going to introduce inputs for moving the block left and right laterally, as well as rotating the orientation, and for uh, speeding up the block's descent when you're happy with the, where you've got it placed. Uh, and so I'm going to also have to introduce a left and right uh, boundary or barrier. So uh, you're, we're defining a playing area here, and I'm going to define a playing area that's uh, 10 of these blocks in width, just like the original game. Uh, so I'll start by doing that here. I'm just going to add a basic uh, shape here, a cube, and uh, I'll change the scale here, let's say, on the z-axis to 10. And uh, I'll place it at location um, 0 on the x-axis and maybe uh, 300 on the y-axis. And I'll just place this so that the bottom is touching the ground here. Uh, maybe 575 is the right number here on the z-axis. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, and I'm just going to duplicate that by grabbing the green uh, arrow here on the gizmo, the y-axis. I'm going to hold Alt and drag one of these over to uh, minus 300 on the y-axis. So I've spaced these uh, 600 units apart, minus 300 to 300, uh, and that's to account for uh, 10 columns of 50 uh, wide, which is 500. And, uh, and then these, the measurement is actually from center to center of the pillars. So that's, that counts for the additional 100. There's uh, 50 units of width here between the center and the wall of the pillar. Um, so we'll start with that. And uh, next I'm going to address uh, something I did in the previous video, uh, or two videos, the first video, which was uh, poor practice. And that is I changed the uh, shade here, the color of this basic shape material. And that's uh, an engine material where I changed that for the entire engine. So basically, even if you start a fresh project and you made a new uh, basic cube or basic shape in that project, it's going to have this darker gray. Um, so I'm going to undo that. I'm going to change this back to uh, bright white here, like it started out, uh, started as. Uh, I'll apply and close that, and I'll make uh, my own material like I probably should have in the beginning. So I'll just call this M underscore playing area. And uh, I'll hold 3 on the keyboard and click here to make a new vector 3, plug that into base color, and I'll set this to um, that dark gray color that I originally kind of had there. And uh, I'll also maybe add, uh, I'll just hold 1 and click here and plug that into roughness. So I'm plugging in a 0 to roughness, and it'll be a, a shiny surface now. So I'll apply, uh, close that, and I'll just drag this material onto the uh, floor and drag it onto these two pillars. And uh, now I fixed up that uh, issue. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started with the uh, inputs that we need. Uh, so I'm going to go to Edit, uh, Project Settings, and I'll click on Input. And I'm going to define a handful of action mappings here. So I'm going to click Plus next to Action Mapping, uh, select the drop down here, and I'll call this one um, rotate block. Uh, and I'll set the key input key here to uh, keyboard uh, spacebar. You can pick anything you want. I'm going to pick spacebar for my input. Uh, and then I'm going to add another action mapping here, and we'll call this one move block left. And I'll add uh, the A key on the keyboard, as well as I'm going to press plus here uh, and also add the left arrow key. So you can use either of those to move the block left. Uh, another action mapping here, and we'll add uh, move block right. And uh, again, I'll press plus here, and we'll set these to D on the keyboard and uh, right arrow on the keyboard. And uh, one more, uh, we'll call this speed block uh, descent. And uh, again, two action mappings. I'll set this to S on the keyboard and the down arrow key on the keyboard. All right, so I've defined all of these inputs here in the project settings. Now what I'm going to do, I'll close that, open up the falling block actor. Uh, and in order to use those inputs, uh, oops, first what I need to do, I'll find an empty spot on the event graph here. Um, I can right click and I can say uh, rotate block for example, get this action event. Uh, but this won't fire unless I have uh, actions, input actions uh, receive uh, turned on. So I've got to select the uh, root of the actor here. In details, I'm going to say uh, auto, auto receive input. 
And so I need to select player zero, and now I'm gonna get, this actor is gonna auto receive our inputs, uh, including all of the ones we just defined. Uh, so I've got rotate block. I'm gonna also uh, just bring out the other input actions here for move block left uh, and move block right. And uh, speed up, uh, or sorry, speed block descent. All right, uh, okay, and so I'll get started here. Just before I start on these, I'm gonna actually make one more small change. Uh, down here on the begin play where we drop the block, uh, where it says here should drop if it's true or false, and if it's true, we add local offset minus 50 on the Z axis. And we actually uh, wanna add world offset, not local offset. So it's always dropping towards the ground or negative Z uh, from a world perspective, not the perspective of the actor. So I'm just gonna delete that, and we're gonna replace that with add world offset, add actor world offset, uh, and put in minus 50 on the z-axis. All right, with that done, I'm gonna go back up here to, um, I'll start with rotate block. Uh, and what I'm gonna do for the rotation is, we wanna check if it's a legal rotation. So if we're snug up against one of the walls or another uh, uh, previously fallen block, uh, we don't want to be able to rotate where it's going to intersect with existing geometry. So we want to check, and rather than use uh, the math, uh, you know, you could use efficient math to check uh, if it's going to intersect if it were to be rotated. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually just sort of cheat a little bit, and we're going to actually rotate the block, and then check if it's intersecting or colliding. Uh, and if it is, we'll just rotate it back and it'll all be in the same frame. So it won't look like it moved. It'll just look like you couldn't make the move. So I'll get started here on uh, rotate block. We'll say add actor and this time adding local offset is the correct, uh, sorry, not offset. Adding local rotation is the correct uh, domain. And uh, we want to rotate on the X axis by uh, 90. And so then we want to check for a collision with any of these cubes that make up the actor. So what I'm gonna do is right click here and say get children, uh, not children, sorry, but get components by class. Make sure it's the plural, get components, uh, and set the component here to static mesh components, which is what these cubes all are. And from return value, I can say for each loop with a break, uh, plug this into the execution, and for each of those cubes, uh, we will get the world location. And from the loop body here, I'm gonna drag and say box overlap actors. So this is a handy function. Uh, the engine basically tells us if this box we draw is overlapping any actors and we can filter them here. So the box that we wanna draw is gonna be the location of the, each of these cubes uh, and the extent uh, the extent of these cubes is 25, but we don't want to accidentally overlap a, you know, any extra edges on the edges or anything like that. Uh, so I'm just going to say the extent could be 15, let's say. Uh, it really doesn't matter because each uh, actor is 50 by 50 minimum. Um, so it's going to generate an overlap with, if there's something there, even though the box is only 15 uh, in dimensions. All right, so uh, object types. We need to drag back and say make array and world static is what we're trying to uh, look for. So that's basically the uh, side walls or boundaries uh, or the floor or any of the previously fallen blocks. And so from the return value here, I'm gonna get a branch. And if we do hit, we do collide with something, uh, then what we wanna do is take this add actor local rotation node uh, and duplicate it here, except now we're gonna move it back to where it was, so minus 90 on the x-axis. Uh, and if this happens here as well, we don't wanna loop through anymore. We're gonna take the uh, execution pin, drag back and plug it into the break pin here. And uh, I can just double click this line to make a reroute node so it's not quite as messy. Double click it again here and drag this up here. All right, uh, and so that's gonna basically take care of the rotation. Uh, we'll try it. rotates the uh, actor, checks if it's intersecting, and rotates it back if it was. And if it wasn't, it'll just leave it in the uh, rotated state. 
so let's just check out how that works so far here. Uh, and let's see here, uh, square is not going to work. It doesn't rotate very nicely. I'll just drag this like so. Now we've got, all right, the T block. Great. Okay, and so I'm pressing uh, space bar here and uh, the actor is rotating and that's great. Uh, but each time I press space, we're also moving upwards. And uh, that's because, uh, you know, I can also press W and A and D and S and uh, that's because we're using default pawn functionality because we haven't defined a pawn for this uh, game yet. Uh, so if I go to the world settings here, for example, we can see game mode overrides none, selected game mode, default pawn class none. So it's, it's giving us the default pawn uh, class that exists in the, uh, the engine, which gives you that fly around functionality. Um, so we don't really want to do that though. We want a planted uh, camera. So I'm going to go ahead and create that now. Um, I'm going to go to make a new blueprint here, a uh, new pawn, and we'll call this B underscore camera. Uh, and I'll open that up here and I'm going to add just a camera component. Uh, pretty simple here. I'll compile. And uh, what I want to do here is close and drag that into the scene. And I'll place this manually here. I'll say location. Uh, whoops. I'll say location. We'll start with 000. zero, zero. Uh, we'll move the height here to maybe 1000. And uh, we'll set the uh, X location to maybe like 750. Uh, or maybe minus 750 and uh, well that appears to be on the back side there all right well that's fine uh, we'll just adjust the directional light here as well so uh, instead of minus 115 uh, we'll go with uh, maybe 70 oops minus 70 that is all right so now we're lit from this side I'm gonna select the B camera actor again here uh, and I'll just rotate it to point down a little bit. Maybe rotate it by 20 degrees, so it's minus 20 on the uh, Y axis. Uh, and that's pretty good, that's what we want. Um, and I also wanna go uh, search here in the details, type in possess and find this auto possess player uh, and select player zero. Um, so now I'll press play again here, try it out. All right, and now we've possessed that camera pawn, I can press space bar and uh, we're not moving anywhere. In fact, A, S, and D, and W don't do anything either. Uh, and that's what we want. We want to introduce our own functionality for those. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce the uh, lateral movement next. So I'm going to go back to the falling block actor. And uh, we've got this move block left and move block right. Uh, and so we're going to use a similar uh, functionality to the rotation here. We'll move the block, check if it intersected, and if it did, then we'll move it back. Uh, and so I'm actually going to copy and paste. We'll grab all of that. Uh, Control D to duplicate. Uh, and then I'm going to make it into a function here, actually. So I'm just going to right click, collapse to function, and call it uh, try lateral movement. And uh, the reason I made it a function is because we're going to try to move uh, a different amount based on whether we've pressed move left or move right. Uh, so I'll just open up the function here, um, select the function node, and I want to add uh, an input. So I'll so find that here in the details, inputs, plus. Uh, and this input we're going to call move amount. I'll set the input, uh, the variable type here to float. And we'll change around these nodes here from local rotation to, lo to uh, world offset. Uh, so I'm going to say add actor world offset. And we'll split this pin here. And we're going to plug in the move amount to the Y axis, delta location Y. Uh, plug that back into the loop execution. And uh, I'll just duplicate that over here as well. We want to uh, get rid of the rotation node and replace it with the world offset node. Uh, plug this back into the break pin. And uh, this time for delta location Y, uh, it'll be the move amount 
except for we're going to multiply it by minus 1 to reverse it. So we're moving back if there was a contact with something, something else, a collision. I'll just uh, double click here and reroute this a bit nicer. And uh, that function is basically finished. Uh, so try a lateral movement, I'll close that function. And uh, now I can plug this in here to move block left. And if we move, uh, if we press in move left, then we'll try to move it by minus 50. And uh, control D to duplicate the node down here. If we're pressing move block right, we'll use the same function, but try to move by a positive 50. All right, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give that a try now. All right, I'll click into the playing field and left and right. Okay, uh, okay, so it's working, but I can't quite move all the way toward the walls. And so the reason is I think that I need to adjust uh, the position of these walls by either 25 or um, the position of our block by 25. Uh, so the blocks are 50 in width and the walls are at 300, but uh, the way that the, the block is centered here in the, or the, you know, the actor is centered um, as the origin, so it's, it's actually 25 offset from being perfectly at a 50 increment. So one or the other has to give by 25. So uh, what we'll do here actually is we'll adjust this uh, actor itself here from uh, 0, 0, 1000 to 0, 25, 1000. And then I also need to go to falling block uh, actor here and on the event graph. Uh, back in the first video here we made uh, spawn falling block actor so it spawns another one of itself just before destroying itself. And uh, we'll change this as well from 0, 0, 1000 to 0, 25, 1000. And I'll just give that another try here. Yeah, all right. So the last thing I want to implement here is the speed up the block descent. So I'll just go back to the event graph here uh, and we'll find that input action here, speed block descent. I'm just going to right click here and say set global time dilation. And we'll drag this uh, attach to pressed and uh, control D to duplicate and attach one to released. Uh, and what we'll do is set the time dilation to five when we press and one to when we release. Um, so that'll speed things up, speed up the whole, uh, all of the gameplay really. Uh, okay, and so uh, we'll give that a try here. Okay, and that's working, but uh, there's quite a bit of uh, blur happening when we speed up the descent. So we'll fix that up by uh, removing our motion blur uh, and what we want to do to remove motion blur is add a post-process volume. So I'll go uh, to add volumes here, add uh, post-process volume. And uh, for the post-process volume here, I'm going to search for extent and select infinite extent. So it's going to cover the entire uh, map or level or world. I I'm not using multiple zones, so I don't need to actually size this to encompass everything. Just by checking that, it uh, covers everything. So I can move this out of the way now. Uh, somewhere where I'm not going to see it. It's not going to, I can also move this directional light, for example, up out of the way. Okay, and uh, what I want to do here is uh, select my post process volume, and in the details, I'm going to search for motion and find motion blur. Uh, click on amount here, set it to zero. Oops, and uh, now if I press play, uh, we can see it's quite a bit smoother action. We're not getting that motion blur. There's a little bit of artifacting happening when I uh, rotate these blocks around. A bit of anti-alias artifacting, uh, but it's not too bad. And uh, that pretty much covers it. So for this video, we've added our lateral movement, and we've added our rotation, and uh, we've added uh, our camera pawn, and uh, speed up descent of the blocks. Uh, so now what we need to do is look at adding uh, functionality for detecting when you've completed a line. So right now we can fill up these lines all we want, uh, but of course there's no functionality yet to uh, detect when we've filled a line. And that's what we'll do in the next video. We're going to detect when a line is full and uh, remove the line uh, or lines and uh, drop all the rest of the blocks above that uh, downwards. And uh, after that, we'll take a look at uh, implementing uh, scoring based on how many lines you've removed uh, at a time. Okay, so that basically wraps it up for this video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.